Welcome again to Real Chemistry. I'm Dr. Morris. We're going to finish up now a discussion we started on the two-slit experiment. When we discussed in a previous video the two-slit experiment, we saw that when you measured what an electron was doing, it changed its behavior. And so what we saw was that if you don't measure where the electron is, when you send it down through two slits, you get an interference pattern. On the other hand, if you do measure it, suddenly we don't get an interference pattern and our electron behaves like a particle. So that means our electron behaves like a wave, then we measure it, and it behaves like a particle. That is called the problem of measurement. What happens to change it from behaving like a wave to behaving like a particle? What's going on there? And that problem gets even more complex when you think about the fact that measuring something is done with things that are also described by quantum mechanics. So what that means is, right, you used a detector to measure where the electron was, to measure what slit it went through. Well, that detector has little itty-bitty parts in it made of electrons, made of protons, made of neutrons, right? And those can all be described by quantum mechanics. And so what that means is each of those is described as a wave. So now we go to measure our electron, and we're measuring a wave with a wave. What happens when two waves mix? Well, that happens all the time. In fact, we looked at that in the last video. You can see that when two waves mix, you just get another wave. So if quantum mechanics accurately describes all of reality, then why is it that when we mix two waves, we suddenly get a particle? That doesn't make any sense. In fact, it means that something's going on that we don't yet understand. Because if quantum mechanics describes everything, then we shouldn't be able to do this measurement process. We shouldn't be able to take something behaving like a wave and make it behave like a particle just by mixing two waves. That doesn't happen. So what's going on here? Well, this has led people to a lot of different explanations of what's going on in quantum mechanics. These are all called interpretations of quantum mechanics. They are the background philosophical ideas that help us get a handle on what's going on in quantum mechanics. It's important to realize that these aren't science, strictly speaking. These deal with scientific facts, they take in scientific facts, but then we apply our philosophical reasoning. We use the rules of logic, and we try to think through, hey, what makes the most sense here? All of these different interpretations are consistent with all the experiments. So there's none of the interpretations, which I'm going to show you in a second, which is inconsistent with some experiment. Right? Some people maybe occasionally claim that, but there's none that have been like very clearly confirmed as inconsistent with experiments. So, this is the crazy thing, right? There was a group of people at a quantum mechanics conference, and somebody decided, I'm going to take a survey. So they surveyed 33 of the people there, and they asked them, what's your favorite interpretation of quantum mechanics? And this is what we got. These different options, they have to be numbered or lettered A through M. So you can see we get tons of different options. That means some scientists think that the underlying reality of quantum mechanics is one way, others another way, and none of them agree at all. So what are these all doing? These are all trying to solve, among other things, the problem of measurement. They're trying to say what happens at that critical moment when something goes from behaving like a wave to behaving like a particle. Now let's go through a few of these. We're not going to go through all of them, there's way too many, but I'm going to go through a few of them that I think illustrate the sort of different approaches we have. The first and most famous, the Copenhagen interpretation. You see there that 42% of the respondents said that. Now remember, this poll is only asking 33 people, so it's not exactly a representative poll, but it does give you the sense that there's lots of different options out there and experts hold them all. So the Copenhagen interpretation basically says, you know what? Stop asking what the wave function represents. We use the wave function as a tool to calculate things. It gives us good answers. And that we're pretty happy with. So they don't try to make any claim about what's fundamentally going on there. They just say, you know what, the wave function goes from wave to particle. Don't worry about that too much. Quantum mechanics isn't ultimately telling us about the reality of nature. It's just letting us predict experiments. So they basically say, shut up and use it as a tool. Not very satisfying. Not very satisfying at all. And this is the dominant interpretation, or at least has a plurality of all of these respondents, in part because that's most often what's been presented in classes when you teach quantum mechanics. So at the founding of quantum mechanics, this was the most popular by far of the interpretations, and it's been taught all the way down sort of as like the orthodox interpretation, but there's not really a good reason for that other than historical reasons. So it's not like there's a compelling philosophical or scientific reason to think that's the best one. Okay, these get crazy. So, stick with me here. Next, we got 
the Bohm or de Broglie Bohm interpretation. Zero respondents here said that they uh, followed this interpretation, but the people giving the survey said, you know what, that's kind of surprising. That's a pretty common interpretation. Uh, so it's probably just because we only asked 33 people. Anyways, it's it's a very important and interesting interpretation. What it says is actually it's not that something goes from a wave to a particle. It's that there's two fundamental realities in the world, waves and particles, and that our electron system is both a wave and a particle. What that means is there's a wave that guides our electron in its path, and then there's an electron hanging out on that wave. And this way, it's kind of like, imagine a Coke can sitting on top of a wave in the ocean. It goes up and down, up and down. That wave is like our wave function that guides that can, which is like our electron. So the way that the Bohm interpretation gets around this, it says there's two different realities. There's the uh, wave and the electron, and they're there together all the time. And they can go ahead and reproduce all the results of quantum mechanics that way. So this is totally consistent with everything we know about quantum mechanics and solves that sort of weird problem. So it's an appealing option, but some, for some reason, it's actually not super popular, as you see 0% here, presumably more than that. Okay, the next one probably you've heard of because it's crazy and awesome is called the many worlds interpretation. The many worlds interpretation is basically saying that actually the wave function doesn't ever change to a particle. So we see one outcome or one result. But what the many worlds interpretation says is you know how mixing two waves is supposed to make a wave? That's actually what all of reality is. So our whole reality is just actually one part of a giant wave function describing tons of different worlds, almost exactly like ours, where all the possible outcomes of a quantum measurement exist. So think about it this way. The universe begins. Shortly after, there's the first quantum measurement. When that happens, and let's say there's two outcomes, A or B, it's not that A happens or B happens. It's that both A and B happen, and they split and make two new worlds. Crazy crap, huh? Crazy. And then every single time a quantum measurement is done, the world split again and again. And I think you can, it just should blow your mind that 18% of professional physicists, mathematicians, and philosophers say that's what reality is. So it tells you how troubling people find the problem that we've been talking about, the problem of measurement. All right? So as you can see, there's tons of different interpretations. And all of them are viable in the sense that they're consistent with the science. But which one you choose is ultimately going to come down to what you already believe is true about reality. If you, on the other hand, think that the world should be predictable and that stuff uh, like wave functions ultimately describe a real reality, then maybe you're going to like the Bohm interpretation. If you think all of this philosophical mumbo jumbo isn't worth your time, then maybe you're going to go with the Copenhagen interpretation and say, you know what, frankly, just you know, keep making awesome computers and quit worrying about it.